At this time, we're really excited to welcome Tad Boyle, the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes. Again, his team 24 and 10, 13 and 7 out of the Pac-12. Coach, before we open the floor to questions, uh, your excitement on on being back in the NCAA tournament and uh, what your team's been able to accomplish this season. Thank you, uh, Alex. Appreciate it. Uh, we're excited to be here. Obviously, I mean to to get to this tournament, to get to this stage is uh, is a process for every team and. Uh, Every team has its ups and downs throughout the season. We've had a lot of them. Uh, a lot of ours had to do with injury. And uh, for us to overcome the things we've overcome throughout the year, um, and injuries are part of the game, we all know that. But uh, uh, for these guys to persevere, and I, you know, I, was, I, I feel like we've been in a one-game elimination tournament for about four weeks now, you know, for that L.A. trip when we, we lost to UCLA, a heartbreaker, uh, one-possession game down the stretch, and then found a way to beat USC in double overtime, being down 16. And, and you know, as you look in the rearview mirror, you know, that was a turning point of our season without a doubt. But we didn't know that at the time. We just had to try to win the next game and win the next game. And, and that's what we did and, and got on a roll. And we didn't quite finish it off in Las Vegas, unfortunately. Oregon, Oregon got us in the finals. But, you know, with four minutes to go, that was a tie game and, and, and came down to the end. So. Our guys have been battling and competing, uh, playing at a high level here the last uh, month of the season, and we're, we're excited to be in Dayton. Questions for Coach? We will start on the fourth row at the end. Uh, Jay Tuss, K2B, Boise, Idaho. Uh, Coach, um, what was your first reaction when you saw Boise State pop up next to Colorado, knowing that you would have to go up against, uh, you know, one of your best friends in Leon Rice? Well, it flashed up together. You know, it wasn't like Boise. State came up and then Colorado it was just like they both came up so obviously my eyes went straight to Colorado and and I, I was elated and excited and because I was nervous I, I didn't know you know with 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 all those upsets in the conference tournament North Carolina State beat North Carolina and Oregon beating us not that it was a big upset but you know it was a bid stealing uh, win and and I was excited to be in because I was nervous that we might not be and then when I saw Boise next to our name uh, I was like, oh gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, uh, that's, I don't want to be playing against Leon. I've watched his team a lot this year, which I guess is a good thing. But but uh, he is one of my best friends in this business, without a doubt, and uh, uh, got a lot of respect for him and her, uh, their program. Follow up question. To, to follow that up, what do you think of the job that Leon Rice has done in about the time that you've been at, at Colorado yeah. as well? And then. Uh, probably a dangerous question to ask. I don't want to steal everybody's time, but your your best Leon Rice story, maybe. <laughs> well, let me just say this: most of my Leon Rice stories are not fit for public, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> consumption. <laughs> but I've had we've had some great times together, without a doubt, without a doubt. I forget your first part of the question. And the job he's done. Oh, the job he's done. He's done. An, we got the job in the same year. You know, it's my 14th year at Colorado. It's his 14th year at Boise. So we kind of came in together. We've, we've commiserated, we've celebrated together. Obviously, we coached the last two summers uh, with USA Basketball together and had some, some great times there as well. So, you know, and I look at what he's done at Boise, and I know how hard of a job it is from, from, from the outside. You know, Boise's a great community, as you know, and it's a great, uh, uh, great sports town, but it's so isolated. And, you know, to get kids to come there and, and to recruit at the level he's recruited and to win consistently – you know, year in and year out uh, in, in a really good league like the Mountain West who values basketball, I can't say enough about the job he's done. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a terrific coach and he's a terrific program builder. And, and that's something I think we share a lot in common. We talk a lot about culture, about building the, the right way and getting the right kids that fit, you know, whether it's Boise, Idaho or Boulder, Colorado. And, and he's certainly done that. And I, I think we have too. Let's go to the second row. Worcester, Idaho Press. Tad, what's it been, you know, about your relationship with Leon that it's been able to last 30 years for so long? Well, I think it's, you know, just our approach to life. You know, he's a family guy. I'm a family guy. Um, you know, I know his kids. He, he knows my kids. I mean, it's just uh, when I was a high school coach in Colorado at Longmont High School back in the early 90s, he was an assistant coach at the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, which is my hometown. So our mutual friend, Mark Turgeon, who I played with at Kansas, introduced us, said, you got to get to know this guy. And so we, we struck up a relationship then, and, and, uh, and it's been 
been there ever since. So um, it's just grown, grown and developed through the years. And I think it's just a, a mutual respect, a mutual admiration, and, and the fact that, you know, we've got both – he's got a great sense of humor. He's a fun guy to be around. I mean, if you know Leon, you, you love him. You know, my next question was going to be, what's one, your first uh, chance meeting him when he was recruiting one of your players? But I guess you answered that. Uh, so – just going against him. I know you did. You got to play against him last year, you know. Yep. But now doing it at such a big stage, you know, what's what's that emotions like? Yeah, it's look. When that ball tips up tomorrow, it's not it's not about our relationship or friendship. It's about trying to win a game. They're going to try to win. We're going to try to win, just like we did last year in Myrtle Beach, and they got us last year. They were the tougher team. They physically manhandled us and out executed us. And 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 really, when you get to this stage, you get in these games. It's about your players. It's about what they do on the floor, how, how hard they play, how tough they play. And to me, when you get ready to play Boise State, you better put your hard hat on because they, they're tough, they rebound well, they're physical, they're good basketball players, and they run good stuff offensively, and they're tough defensively. So we're going to have to execute on the offensive end, we're going to have to battle on the boards, and, and we're going to have to make plays. Let's go to the other side of the aisle, uh, second row. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Coach, because you guys know each other so well, you played last year, it's like, what's the temptation, you think, for yourself to try different things, or are you just going to be who you are in this game? Yeah, I think you get to this this point of the season. Look, you, you don't get here if you haven't had success, right? And so you, you stay with what you, you do, and I think – I'm sure he's looking at our team thinking we need to attack this or attack that. We're looking at his team, you know, to look at their strengths, look at their weaknesses. So you might tweak some things here and there, but it's more personnel based, I would say. You know, a lot of the actions, you know, that people run, you've seen them before. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't run into a team unless somebody's running, you know, the Princeton offense or something maybe that you haven't seen in your league or a style that you haven't seen, uh, which, which can happen in this tournament for sure. But, I think Boise, we, we, we've seen a lot of the stuff that they've run, and, and uh, they've seen a lot of stuff that we've run. So we just have to do what we do, and we have to do it better than they do it. Come back to the second row on the aisle. Uh, BJ Rains with uh, Bronco Nation News. Uh, Ted, Leon said right after the selection show, well, I've already watched all their games this year live, so <laughs> it'll make the scouting a little easier. Uh, from that standpoint, kind of following up what you just said there, how, how uh, nice is that on a short turnaround to have the familiarity you did with, with their roster? And, and what does concern you the most about their team? Well, a um, couple things. It has, you know, what the head coach knows has no meaning or bearing. <laughs> it's what do your players know? How, how do you get that information from what you've seen, you know, all year? Because he's watched us, I've watched him. But their players have to understand because they're the ones on the floor executing it. And, you know, when I look at Boise, I look at a guy like Dagenhart, who's, you know, six foot eight, can, can shoot the three, he's 240 pounds, he can score on the block. Um, he's a good player. He's got good shot fakes. He's crafty. Max Rice has got deep, deep range and the ultimate green light. Um, he is the coach's son, right? Um, I don't think he's coming out for any quick or some bad shots. So he, well, you got to guard him from, from beyond the three-point line. So, you know, you see their personnel. You see Ogbo, who's a heck of a, a big wing, who's got good size, who can post up, and he can shoot threes. And then and then Stanley, who's been a great addition to their team, you know, very active and uh, athletic. So, and then they got Anderson at the point. So they've, they've got good players. There's no doubt about it. So a lot of things scare me about Boise, but to me, uh, they, they can hurt you from a lot of different positions. Follow-up question? And you touched it on your, in your intro just about getting healthy and stuff, but what has been the, the, the biggest key, you think, to losing one game in the last month or whatever and why you guys are playing so well? I think right there's, there's two things from, from that standpoint for us. Those, those of you who have not watched us, we've gotten better defensively. Uh, now, that didn't show very much against Oregon in a championship game down the stretch for sure. In the second half, I think we got eight stops in 27 possessions. So that left us, you know, that half, and that's, that's what cost us the game. But we've gotten better defensively over the last month, and we've, we've done a better job taking care of the basketball. Again, didn't do it against Oregon uh, in that championship game. They scored 23 points off our turnovers. We scored zero off theirs, and we lose a seven-point game. So, uh, but we got to take good care of the basketball. It's going to be the case against Boise, because if they turn you over, they'll run. Uh, and they're, they're very sound defensively. But we take care of the ball and we guard them. Uh, as long as we play Colorado basketball on the offensive end, you know, we'll, we'll be in good shape. 
but uh, we can't turn it over, and we got to guard the heck out of those guys. A fifth row in the back. Bob Beeler from the Bronco Radio Network. You talked about Degenhardt, who's first team all Mountain West. You've got a first team all Pac 12er in KJ Simpson. So give us a scouting report on what makes him special. KJ, you know, has had uh, uh, an all American type year. You look at his numbers, you look at his consistency, you look at his efficiency. He does everything for us. He scores the ball, he distributes the ball, he rebounds the ball, he guards the ball. I mean, he is a he is a legitimate, in my my opinion, a legitimate All American candidate that doesn't get enough national attention. And guess what? Now he's on a national stage. Now he doesn't need to do anything outside of who he is. He just needs to play his game. But uh, we've got good players in our team, just like Boise's got good players in their team. But Dagenhart uh, is to me the key to their team. And then you know, getting out and uh, guarding the three-point line with Max and, 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 uh, and Ogbo. Those, those, those guys we got to really take away. And we can't forget about Stanley. You can't forget about Anderson. You can't forget about their guys coming off the bench. But uh, you got to know Degan Hart is kind of the head of their snake, so to speak. A fourth row. Jacob, Jacob Toby, 9 News Denver. It's up, Tad. Um, what is it about the tournament that can elevate the status of somebody, right? You've been very vocal about KJ all year long, especially yep. towards the end. Um, so what, was it, what is it about the tournament and how excited are you for people to now see what you're preaching, what you've been well, talking Well, I mean, number one, he just has to be who he is, Jacob. He, I, that's what I've told our team. Like, KJ doesn't need to come out and be somebody that he's not. He just needs to be the KJ Simpson that he's been all year. And, you know, the difference is the stage. The difference is the media. The difference is the, the lights, the attention, the um, – and, and all eyes are on this tournament for the next three weeks. And so when you have that and you just perform the way he's been performing, that's all he has to do. He doesn't do, have, to, have to do anything special. And if he does that, people will see how special a player he is. We'll stay with that same mic. First row on the end. Coach Scott Proctor, Colorado, good to see you again. Two, you guys in Boise State, two really good rebounding teams. Yeah. How much is that going to determine kind of this game, and how much is that an emphasis to you to, you know, crash the boards on both ends? Key, absolute key. Because to me, when you talk about toughness in basketball, you, 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 you talk about the turnovers, being able to take care of the ball and not turn that thing over, being mentally tough, strong with the ball, because they rake at you when you drive it. They're going to be in the gaps when you drive it. you got to make good plays. And then the rebounding battle. You, you look at those two areas, and that'll tell you how tough your team played. And uh, and I'm sure they're talking about it too. You know, they're they're uh, again. You look at Stanley. You look at Dagan Hart. You look at Ogbo on the offensive glass. Those guys go, and they're physical. So we gotta we gotta create space with our box outs. So good the good news is, you know, we just played uh, an Oregon team that that played physical against us. Washington State in the semis played physical. Um, so we've played against physicality before. Um, and they have too, but but it'll be a big part of the game tomorrow. Follow up question. Yeah, just a follow up. Um, you guys are 19 and five this season when Eddie grabs at least six rebounds. Yeah. Five and four when he doesn't. So basically, a toss up game when he doesn't. Is is there something to that? And what do you kind of make of that? Yeah, I think I think if you look at at Eddie um, and when he is what I call dialed in or locked in, um, both defensively and offensively, because he can he can be a problem for other teams uh, on, on, on the glass, certainly uh, on the block. And he's a great passer. You know, they bring him Cam Martin off, off of their bench, who's their second, second leading assist guy. We bring in it. Eddie starts for us, but he's a really good pass first big. And uh, when, he, when he puts his mind to it and he's, he's emotionally involved and, and, and uh, locked in, he's a difference maker. Without it, and he's a problem for other teams. So he's going he's gonna to create double teams. It's how well can we play out of those double teams because it's hard to score over two guys. So we're going to have to kick it out, and we're going to have to get the ball moved, and we're going to have to attack closeouts and, and make plays. If we do that well, we'll be okay. If we don't, we'll be in trouble. Fourth row. Uh, I want to ask you about two players. I'm going to begin with Max Rice, though. You've known Leon forever, which means you've probably known Max for a while. What was the first time where you thought, like, ah, maybe this kid – uh, you know, has something special in him, and then just his growth and development over his last, you know, six years at Boise State. Yeah, has it been six or eight? I can't remember. Um, but no, you know, I, I've known Max for a long time, and uh, I kind of seen him grow up from afar. Certainly not day to day, but um, 
you know, he's he's always been in a gym. You know, I remember talking to Leon. It's like, you know, he's he's just been a gym rat, you know, going down even when he was in, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, he's been a, a gym rat. So you knew he's got a chance because he's always been a really good shooter. And then, you know, early in his career, he had to adjust to college basketball and the, and the speed and the physicality of it. But he's, you know, he's a big, strong 6'5", 200, probably 205. I don't know what his weight is now, but he's a big, strong guard that can handle physicality and he can make shots. He's got deep, deep range. And so to see his development, he's become a, a better defender. And uh, so to see his development, you know, over his college career has been has been uh, pretty neat to watch. And, and he's a he's a legit he's a legit uh, threat now. And just a reminder, if you could please provide your name and affiliation before a question, we greatly appreciate it. And then let's go to the fifth row in the back. Mark Johnson, the Colorado Basketball Network. Ted, you've talked about y your team being a high IQ basketball team. I'm wondering about the importance of that quality being in a tournament where you find out and literally hours later you're playing a college basketball game against somebody you haven't seen. Yeah, it's it's hard. Again, it, uh, Mark, uh, I know Boise State uh, and their personnel. I think Coach Greer on our team who has the scout, he knows them. But it's, it's being able to translate that knowledge in a real quick turnaround to your players. And then they've got to be able to absorb it, understand it, and then go out and execute against it. So it's – I think – critically important to have a high IQ team, to have a team that can digest because, you know, you get in this tournament, you got one day prep um, between games. And then, you know, if you're, you know, you're able to get out of that first weekend, now you got a little bit more time for the next game. But, you know, as this thing rolls, preparation becomes more and more important and understanding your opponent and what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. If we, if we don't understand that Tyson Degenhart uses shot fakes, you know, and uses his body to create angles, we're going to have problems. If we understand that and we stay down on those shot fakes and we make him score over our length and, and be rock solid, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take our chances. But you gotta, you got to play smart as well as playing hard. And, and playing smart is part of execution. And I think we've got a team, I think, that can do that. We'll see if we do or not. I think, I think we can. We've shown that we can. We just got to go out and do it. Coach, we really appreciate your time, and, and we're looking forward to watching you go up against Boise State tomorrow night. Thank you.